Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wayslam reviewer, and I'm here to review The Souvenir Part 2, which I finally got to see, and as you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited about it. This released at like the end of October, beginning of November, sometime around there, and has only been playing at one theater in Brooklyn, which is like the closest theater that I could go to to see this, and I wasn't going to go there during like the height of Omicron and like COVID and stuff like that, and I get anxious enough going into cities anyway, pre-COVID, so I haven't really done that kind of venture and just to see this film, and luckily... A24 did their virtual screener room, and we're selling a double feature of the first and second souvenir. And I didn't re-watch the first souvenir, but like I remember really loving that film and seeing how it portrays this young woman, her relationship with her mother, and this toxic relationship that she has. You have Julie with Antony, and this man who's so thought-provoking and intelligent but manipulative and controlling but does it in a way to help her grow which makes it all the more just ugh, gross and disgusting and toxic and unfortunate because you have this woman who has grown so much in this time with this man but he's done this horrible damage to her psychologically and emotionally and the sequel is the perfect pickup of like First one ends tragically and leaves Julie in a whole new world on her own. And her trying to navigate it in this film is engaging and interesting and fleshed out in such a tender and beautiful film. Joanna Hogg, who is the director of this film, crafts a very vintage and like grainy kind of look to it with the cinematography as well. And it's a very engrossing and... There's just a tenderness about it. There's nothing big, extra melodramatic about anything that happens in this film. It's just such a genuine and artistic view and atmosphere wrapped around this beautiful film. And you have Honor Swinton Byrne, who is fantastic yet again, being able to bring this genuine nature to this young woman who's going through a lot. She's chasing her passion. She's trying to deprogram herself from the abuse that she's been through and trying to find the intimate connection that she did have because having been in some toxic relationships myself you kind of hang on to those little positives and that's what she struggles with missing that intimacy that she did have despite the fact that there were so many other red flags all around and her trying to recapture that intimacy with interactions with men and this is such a great story about growth and ownership of your own growth ownership of your own dreams and your own story and this is portrayed in such a well-written well-told story that flows so well and the deconstructing of that abuse and programming takes a long time and she has some uncomfortable moments you feel Swittenburn expressing awkwardness and discomfort in her interactions with other men and trying to find a place for herself among this like dating world and you know she has uncomfortable interactions with somebody who turns out to be gay or a very fiery and passionate lover charlie heaton from like stranger things which ends in a very disgusting and awkward interaction and you have this supporting cast you have uh richard iota who is so fantastic as this big bold filmmaker who just is such a perfect person to like come in and shake things up but he inspires julie to be a filmmaker and to go for it and you get to see her art her film which is bold and artistic and that was such a interesting film within a film of seeing how that all played out and engrossing and artistic and thematic and symbolic in so many ways and you have Tilda Swinton as her mother in this and they have such a wonderful relationship seeing their connection in its most genuine and sincere you feel their real life connection as mother and daughter through into this film and why it feels so genuine the whole entire perspective of this film, its themes, its story, its filmmaking, its acting, 
all come together to make the perfect, unexpected sequel to a human drama that you never expect to need a sequel, but this film earns it so deeply and profoundly that you can't help but just absolutely love it, and I couldn't help it. I absolutely love this film. This is now one of like my top 25 films of 2021. I just was blown away by this, and it was so well worth the wait. Hopefully you all get a chance to see it either in theaters, on VOD, or if A24 does another screening experience like I got to experience. But those are my thoughts on The Souvenir Part 2. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.